of user ID tracking. Platforms like Google Analytics offer cross-device tracking reports, but sometimes they need a little bit of help, specifically user IDs. Fortunately, using Google Tag Manager, this is pretty easy. You'll see exactly how to do that in this lesson. Let's take a look. All right, it's another deep dive, this time into user ID tracking. The lesson objectives for today. First, we're gonna talk briefly about why you would even want to set this up. Then we're going to dive into our gas variables as we continue to expand what's possible with our Google Analytics settings variable. And we're gonna talk about a few of the things that you really should consider when setting up user ID. The journey so far, we just finished custom dimensions and metrics. We are now on user ID tracking. Then we move into table variables, JavaScript variables, event variables, and others as we continue on. Of course, right now though, user ID tracking. First, why would we even want to use user ID? I think the best way to explain this is, is just sort of thinking through how Google Analytics works. So the way that analytics works is you have a cookie ID and I'll show you uh, what this looks like here. So we're going to go into our site, our little demo site, and I'm just going to bring up our GAD bugger. And you've got the client ID. This is the cookie that Google Analytics drops. So the number dot number right in here, that's your user ID or, or technically Google Analytics version of a user ID. They call it the client ID. So that client ID really isn't built to track people, though that would be great. And they're getting better at things like that. It's really good at identifying browsers, though, the actual browser you're using. So maybe this is the browser that you have at the house. And then this is the browser you have on your phone. And then this is when you come back to the site uh, from work, something like that. So three different actual browsers. Uh, and then, you know, even if they're all Chrome or, or whatever, but the, each of those has a different client ID. And to Google Analytics, at least by default, each one of these actually will look like a completely separate user. Okay, so we have to Google Analytics, this radically different user group. And while that is technically true, you've got these three different browsers that are here. That's not really useful for us. We we want to be able to analyze and uh, really find insights from our data from a combined user group. So what we can do is we can actually stitch those together. We can help Google Analytics do that with the user ID. And so the user, we actually sign a user ID that kind of supersedes all of these client IDs. Now these client IDs still stay there and analytics is still recording those and we're not actually adjusting that at all. That just keeps doing what it's doing. What we're doing is we're adding a layer on top to say, okay, when you see these client IDs, go ahead and associate them to this particular user ID. For example, uh, we set this user ID to be, you know, user one, two, three. And so what would happen then is all of these different sessions, all these different visits, all these different browsers, all of these actual uh, previously what were known to Google Analytics as the different users, the different client IDs, they all get associated to kind of the super user, which is user ID tracking. Now, this is something that's only available with universal analytics. So uh, you probably are already using that. Everybody should be uh, at this point. It was an upgrade that came out years ago with Google Analytics, but not a lot of people are using user ID tracking. They haven't actually set it up. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So that's really why you want to use user ID. Now let's go into how to actually set this thing up. And for that, we're going to pull into our uh, Google Analytics and our Tag Manager here. So the very first thing we need to do is actually prepare Google Analytics to receive the data. Generally speaking, that's a great place to start whenever you're doing an implementation. You work with your platform to make sure the platform is ready to receive the data, then you use Tag Manager to actually fire through the data. So in this case, the way that we set up user ID tracking is you would go into your tracking info and then user ID, and you will see uh, when you first go to set it up that you'll have to review the policies, make sure you read through those and understand kind of what you're getting into. And then you create your user ID view. Now, in our case, we have already done that, which we have here. Now, this user ID view, the way that you know it's actually user ID view is you can go to view settings and you will see here it says user ID reports enabled. That's how you know that this is a user ID view. If I go into any of my other ones, I go to my uh, workshop view here, you will see it says disabled. So this is a non user ID view. And that means as I send through user ID, it's just kind of be basically ignored here. Uh, but on this one, on my actual user ID, which I've customized and created in Google Analytics, this is enabled. So this is kind of what you're looking for. Now I'm going to go to Tag Manager and we're going to figure out, okay, how do I get the user ID? Number one, what is my user ID? And then how do I send that user ID to Google Analytics so it ends up in the right spot for the right view? 
So what I'm going to do first, we're going to tackle this one step at a time, and we're going to look at kind of what's available in our implementation, in our build. And what I have available to me at this point is a visitor ID. I've actually got this user ID that is showing here. Um, so I've got my uh, logged in user, and the ID is number one. So in this particular case, again, this is the Google Tag Manager for WordPress plugin that I happen to be using that is giving me a nice, simple, easy to find user ID. Where else do you find those? Sometimes you'll be working with your developer to actually find these and push them into the data layer on your own. Sometimes you will, might see them in the URL as a parameter, maybe as a contact ID of some sort uh, coming through or another user ID. Um, but either way, your first step is figure out what is your user ID going to be? Typically, it's your CRM. It's the ID that's coming from your CRM. In this case, our CRM is WordPress, and so we're just using the WordPress ID. Um, but if you're using Infusionsoft, maybe it's a contact ID or Salesforce, it's the contact record ID, uh, the user ID of that uh, particular contact in your Salesforce system. So, but that's, that's what you really have to focus on first. Decide what, as a company, you are going to determine is going to be the definition of your user ID. And it's the one number that's gonna rule them all. So it's an important thing to think through. In this case, again, we're gonna keep it simple. I already have the visitor ID popping through here. So I've got that. Now I need to figure out how do I get that information into Google Analytics? And if you're thinking, well, it's Google Analytics, therefore probably something with that Google Analytics settings variable, you'd be 100% correct. So we're gonna go into our Google Analytics settings variable. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to edit this. And again, this the reason we're editing in the variable is because this is a global variable. It affects every single Google Analytics tag that uses this variable. And because of that, I can change it in one spot and have these changes ripple through my entire implementation, at least when it comes to uh, Google Analytics, which is great. It's exactly what I want here. Now, how do I get user ID? All I need to do is I go to add field. And then you literally start typing in user and you will see it right there, user ID. So this is how you get the user ID. This is kind of like the slot that's built into Google Analytics. This is waiting for data. Um, so this is the where we're gonna send it through. Then I have to do the value. Now, we know that this is the visitor ID was what I was gonna use for my user ID. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new variable because we don't quite have that. Now, where was this variable? This variable is located in the data layer. So I'm doing a data layer variable. So we're going to uh, go back and we're gonna find what it is. Again, visitor ID. I'm just triple checking to make sure that my case sensitive is correct. So visitor and then capital I, lowercase d. I come back here, I have visitor, capital I, lowercase d. So those match and it should absolutely work. Now I'm gonna go ahead and save that. This is a data layer variable. In this case, looking for a visitor ID in the data layer and then returning back with that value. That's our label now, just to remind me how I have that set up. So this is it. Now I've got user ID and then we're passing through the user ID. So all well and good. Now, what's one other thing that I might wanna do with some of my other uh, reports that I've got, some of these other views? Well, I might wanna set up a custom dimension. So I could do that as well. And that's because the user ID view is the only thing that really pays attention to this, to this user ID. It's only the user ID views in Google Analytics that, that do that. The rest of the views ignore it. But maybe I wanted to have those details there for the other views so I can do some deeper analysis on my users. So what I could do then is I could actually pass it through as a custom definition and then custom dimension. And you can see here, we already have that set up. It's set up as a user level uh, scope already, and it's index number four. So I'm just going to go ahead and type that in. So we've got to do this. So now what's happening is I'm basically using the same value. You see, I'm not creating another one. I'm using the same value, the same variable in this case, uh, that's actually going one, it's going into the user ID slot. That is for my user ID view, so that my cross device tracking reports and everything else can come through. Then I'm passing it through as a custom dimension into other views so that I can do deeper level user-based analysis in those views if I want. It'll be a custom dimension there. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on save. And with that, we're going to click on refresh. Then I'm going to go through here and we're going to refresh this one. And what we should see is uh, the very first thing I'm going to do is make sure my variables are even picking it up. So I'm going to go to my page view event. That's where the, the initial analytics uh, page view tag fires. And I'm going to my data layer variables and just see, okay, visitor ID does in fact equal one. Now let's go look at the tags. And this page view tag did fire. So I click through here and I can see I've got, uh, as my tag is coming through, 
There's my different dimensions coming through. And look at that. Dimension number one is my user ID right there. And I've got user ID right here. So this is the user ID that's actually going through to the user ID view. And this is the one that's actually going through as a just a regular old custom dimension um, so that we have that as well. Now, again, even though it's a number in this case, why am I not sending it through as a metric? Because custom metrics are things that you want to multiply, divide, or otherwise kind of do some sort of arithmetic with. Like that's what metrics are. So yes, they're all numbers, but basically you can uh, slice and dice them, right? That's, what, that's the difference between a metric and a dimension. A dimension is something you sort by, and the metric is something you're doing math with. Um, so that's the, the, the two big reasons why I'm doing dimension here is because I want it to be something I sort be able to say, show me all of the different hits uh, or goals achieved by a certain user. And this is where I would be able to do it in my custom dimension. That's why that's there. And of course, in user ID view, I can go through and do my cross device reports and everything because we know it's coming through. Now, how else do I TBV that? Again, trust but verify because you cannot in analytics do it through real time but i can come through here and i can see okay there's my dimension four set to one so i can see that that was coming through um, and again user id i'm just looking for the user id details as they come through there's user id right there user id is one so and that's because in the data layer it is defined as visitor id one so there you have it. That is how we actually set up user ID tracking. Remember, Google Analytics needs the Google Analytics settings variable. It requires it. And you can take advantage of this one variable. You can adjust it. You can grow it. You will come back to it over and over again. You will evolve this variable and it will become more and more powerful. And what's really cool about it is that the changes that you make in this one spot ripple through your entire implementation. Sometimes that's exactly what you want. Sometimes it's not. So you always want to trust but verify to make sure. Uh, but in this case, it's exactly what we want. So we have that. Now, here are some things to consider when it comes to user ID tracking. Privacy. Uh, in particular, personally identifiable information. You can see here some systems might use a, a user ID that's an email address. Well, that's what they call PII in the measurement world and analytics uh, terminology. So it's personally identifiable information, again, otherwise known as PII. Anything that's personally identifiable, first names, last names, email addresses, addresses, um, anything like that, phone numbers, uh, even IP addresses. So you want to have something that's identified particularly to a single user. And that's why, uh, again, I'd recommend going to the CRM, whatever platform you are uh, using your CRM at, that you go there and that's the thing that records and creates the contact record. And since that's the thing that goes and creates the contact record first and starts actually recording behaviors that are happening, that's that's where you go to figure out, okay, this is what is going to define my user ID and then make sure it gets passed through again into the data layer, through a URL, uh, or countless other ways that you can do that. But there are some things to consider. And again, this is not something that's a five minute setup, even though it doesn't take a long time. You saw how fast I did it. You do want to make sure that you go through, consider, and plan out these steps. Now, here's what's been covered. We talked about why user ID tracking. We talked about continuing to expand and evolve what's possible with our gas variable, our group Google Analytics settings variable. And of course, things to watch out for when using user ID. And there are a lot of moving pieces with this. So I'm going to give you a few different resources to get started on your journey with user ID tracking. The first is Google's. So you can go to Google's guide on using user ID in GTM. Then take a look at Simo's post. This once user ID, always user ID. It's a fantastic post on how to set up user ID um, and other ways to do it. Remember in Tag Manager, I just showed you one of countless ways to do it. There's lots of different ways to do things in Tag Manager and Analytics. I'm showing you the simplest, easiest ways to sort of help you get from point A to point B. But in Simo's post, he will show you some additional ways that you can use user ID tracking uh, and some more advanced ways that you of course, Google's guide to user ID in Google Analytics, a super important one for you to go through as well, because you want to make sure that you are uh, using user ID uh, and not violating any uh, terms and conditions, even accidentally. So make sure that um, you go through all of this different documentation, at least spend 20 or 30 minutes this time going through this, getting familiar with things, and don't just willy-nilly set this stuff up. 
uh, whatever you do. Don't just, just because you saw me do it, then follow along. You want to make sure that you're not accidentally violating uh, a privacy policy somewhere. So make sure that you go through and do that, especially with what GDPR has. Uh, that's a, a newer privacy law that came in in 2018. And you want to make sure you research it. Um, you know, talk to your compliance officers that uh, might be in your own organization to be sure that user ID tracking is something that you even want to do. But again, if you are ready to do it, this is now something that you know how to do. So with that, what are your next steps? Build your plan. You see a pattern here. We're always talking about planning. Are you ready and do you even need user ID tracking? This is a conversation that you might have with your team, with your implementers. You need to figure out how are you going to determine as a company the user ID, the one number that rules them all, the one identification that rules them all. It doesn't have to be a number. It can be a, a combination of letters and numbers. Um, but it's that one thing that rules them all. And remember, slowing down gets you there faster. It tends to happen a lot. The more you spend in planning, the faster the build out and the implementation goes, the more useful the reports are in the end. So definitely, definitely take some time to slow down and really research this now that you know that at least one way of how simple it can be to actually get this stuff up and running. Then if you do decide to move forward with this, prepare Google Analytics, make sure you set up some user ID views, and then maybe even pass through some custom dimensions. Take a look at Simo's article. You see some of that stuff as well, some additional ways of setting it up because there are multiple ways to set this up. And as always, this is yet another great chance to work with your developer, in particular, pulling out the user IDs and popping them into the data layer for you. Because if you can take the information that's already in the data layer and do something with it in Tag Manager, it is so much easier to use Google Tag Manager. And once those are done, we are ready to move on. At this point, you should have a solid understanding of how to grab user IDs and of how to pass them through to various platforms, in this case, Google Analytics. Once you're ready, let's move on to deep dive table variables. See you there.